That brings me to my next principle, separation of powers. The Constitution specifically lays out certain powers for each branch of government. Let's review those branches. First branch is called the legislative branch. It's the branch in charge of making the laws. It consists of Congress, which is made up of a House of Representatives and a Senate. Then you have the executive branch, whose job is to enforce the law or carry out the law. They're headed by the president and vice president. And there's also millions of federal employees known as the bureaucracy that help the president carry out the law. Then there's the judicial branch, which is headed by a Supreme Court. And then there is a layer of appellate courts and a layer of district courts underneath the Supreme Court. The job of the judicial branch is to try cases and to ultimately interpret the laws that are created. Founding fathers like James Madison knew that in order to protect the people and to have good government, he wanted to divide the power amongst branches. Closely related to separation of powers is the principle of checks and balances. So now that we've set up our three branches, another way to ensure that the government doesn't become too large and too powerful is to allow those branches to check and balance each other's power. Check basically means to limit. So each branch can limit the other branch's power, ultimately keeping the people safe. For example, Congress has the power to make laws, but what if those laws are bad laws or laws that trample the rights of people? The president could veto that law passed by Congress, while the Supreme Court, which is part of the judicial branch, can ultimately overrule that law using its power of judicial review, nullifying that law, and ultimately protecting the people. We want a government that's gonna do its job, but at the same time, we wanna protect the people. How about the president? What if the president's violating the law? That's where Congress comes in. Congress has the power to impeach, which is done by the House, and to remove the president, which is done by the Senate. If that president is convicted, we've had three presidents to be impeached. Andrew Johnson, Bill Clinton, and Donald Trump. None of those presidents were convicted by the Senate, so none of them were removed. One president, Richard Nixon, resigned after what is called the Watergate scandal. 